Hey everybody, so just a quick uh, shaky handheld phone video today. So what I have here is an Xbox Series X. Uh, it's all taken apart on my desk here because it, when you push the power button, it beeps, uh, the power button flashes, and it just turns right back off. It doesn't do anything. So I have it uh, assembled here somewhat so that it's apart, all the thermal... Um, all the thermal control is taken off of it, and it is plugged into the power supply. Everything's connected together. Uh, this is going to highlight the importance of having a thermal camera. So this is the uh, Seek Compact Pro. That's the thermal camera that I use. And it's um, very valuable. It's almost indispensable in uh, trying to find faults in these newer machines. So I'm going to connect power once I uh, connect the thermal camera. So, I'm going to go over to the thermal camera, and uh, we'll switch to that video. Okay, so this is the thermal cam view. Uh, the clicking and pausing that you'll notice, uh, that's the thermal cam constantly checking its, um, itself. As it warms up, it gets uh, slower and slower that it does the checks, but it, it recalibrates itself constantly. So that's the clicking and the little pause that you see in the video. But this is the Xbox on my desk. This is a view that you have to get used to. You have to um, really play around with one of these for a while to understand what you're looking at. So if I look around the room a little bit, we can start to recognize some things around the room. So like, here's my, my computer monitors. Two of them are old, older computer monitors. They waste a lot of energy, I see, just by uh, the thermal cam. There's a microscope in front of it. Over there, there's two drinks that I have on my uh, my desk. You can tell that they're colder. They're 37 degrees by the scale. And the monitors are up to 100 degrees at the top of the monitor there. So that, that's how you read a thermal, thermal image. It's uh, something you have to get used to over time. But here's the Xbox that we're worried about here. So now I'm going to plug it in. And we see right away things start fading away and one spot starts getting warm. So that spot wasn't warm before, that one spot's getting warm. So it's spread out on this side of the board. I'll put my hand in the frame so you can kind of see. The, it's spread out on this side of the board. It's not a point of heat right here. So that tells me that it's on the other side of the board, whatever we're looking at. So if I come around to this side... The point definitely gets a lot sharper, and it's moving around the whole board there. One, one point is very sharp. So now I'm going to put the um, macro lens on the thermal camera. So that's, that's what's really good about the Seek thermal cameras, that you can get a macro lens for it. And now if we move all the way in here, uh, it's kind of difficult with the camera. I don't know how that's going to translate, I just flipped it upside down. On my screen, it's fine. I don't know how the recording's going to go. Okay, so there is what's wrong. So, um, I'll try to do maybe a side-by-side -side or an overlay in, in post of uh, what this looks like, what we're looking at. And I'll take a, this is a plastic black stick. It's a point. So th this helps you figure out where you're at. So the black stick, I just like practically burnt the tip of the black stick on what's wrong. Sorry for the shakiness. So that's what's wrong. So now I'm going to cut back to video and we'll see what this is that we're looking at. So here's video. We're back live regular video. And here's what we were looking at right here. So you have a coil and then a bunch of capacitors. And this is the capacitor right here that was getting really hot. So, on this board, on this machine, I don't understand any other way that I would have been able to figure out what was wrong with this and how to fix it. The, the thermal cam is just an invaluable tool for fixing today's devices. If you don't have one, if you're a tech and you're working on this stuff, you need to pick up something like this. I, I only went for the, the Seek because of the... Um, the really good uh, macro lens for it. This this lens just snaps right on here. 
and it allows you to get really close to the board and you can see the individual components. I, I hear people uh, like the uh, FLIR, FLIR 1 or something like that, the, the little one that plugs onto a phone. I don't hear really good things about all the other ones, the big ones, the, the ones that have stands on them and everything. They're good for like phones and stuff like that, but once you want to get into something bigger like this, it's an invaluable tool and you need to be able to be mobile with it. You need to be able to walk around with it. All right, now we have the Xbox board on the work desk. Let's take a look at this uh, area that we identified on the thermal camera. So this is the, the area. This is some kind of buck regulator um, that's uh, controlling something, that's giving some power for something. And these are just the capacitors that are smoothing out the power on the, out, uh, on the output of it. So if we get close, there is an actual physical manifestation of this problem. Do you see that? See what's wrong with that? This might get shaky a little bit. I'm going to put it up on its end so you can definitely see it. And there you go. So you may not have needed absolutely needed a thermal camera to find this. You could have thoroughly inspected every single capacitor on this entire board to find this one that was burnt out like that. And uh, the capacitors are plentiful. So if you were to actually look, and, and if we look at this, the one side, it looks completely normal. Looking at this capacitor from this angle, you would never know that that was bad looking at it. There's no burn marks around it. There's no scorch marks around it. The, uh, I, I don't know if that's conformal coating or leftover rosin flux or something like that that's uh, built up around it. It doesn't look melted. There's no telling from that direction. But from this direction, oh, lo and behold, it is cracked. So we'll get this guy off of here. I'm going to move one next to it up one pad so that I can measure it. And then we'll find a suitable replacement for it. This board takes more heat than MacBook boards do. I'll heat up this one. We'll get it on one pad only. Now we can measure it. Never try to measure a capacitor in circuit. It does not give you a proper measurement because you're going to be measuring all the capacitors in that line, not just one. Actually, I should wait for it to cool down. We're not going to get a proper measurement of a hot capacitor. That should be cool. Now let's see what we got. With this capacitor, it doesn't matter which way I hook up my leads. I have 18 microfarads, so it's probably a 20 microfarad. So this is, looks to be a 603 20 microfarad. I don't think I'm going to have that. I'm going to have to find that off of a board, possibly. But just for the hell of it, I will check my book and see if it goes up that high. Now, my highest is 2.2 .2 microfarad, a suitable replacement from my MacBook board, because I'm in no short supply of MacBook boards. While I'm at it, let's put this capacitor back to where it belongs. We'll add some fresh solder there. I'll add a little bit 
on that side too. Also clean up this while I'm at it. Okay, that doesn't look good. We will add some flux, and I will answer the phone. Okay. So yeah, this that didn't look too good. So we'll add a little bit of flux, and we'll get a good flow in uh, once we get the uh, replacement. So let's look for a replacement. See if we can find something. Um, okay, let's see if we can find a part. So if we find a part, I'm looking for a 20 microfarad and a 603. So we'll search. Okay, the 1707 has this capacitor, should have this capacitor. Uh, I, I have a lot of 1707 boards, so let's go for 1707. A few moments later. I ay 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 five minutes later UF So we're getting two twenty. So we have to ignore the two twenties. Here's twenty microfarad four oh two. I don't know if I want to put a four oh two where six oh three belongs. These are all four oh twos. One eternity later. So after a lot of searching of a lot of different files, uh, this capacitor does not exist on any of the donor boards that I have. I do not have a 20 microfarad uh, 603 capacitor so I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue to not have it in here it's smoothing on the output of a um, buck regulator I don't like not putting it back, but I don't have it. So let's just flow this into place, clean this all up. Take a little bit of the take a little bit of the solder off the side of that. A little bit too much solder. Okay. 
Okay. And now we have the job of putting this Xbox back together, and uh, it should be fine. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a second with an update. All right, the moment of truth. It's working. Interesting. The, the error it decided to um, present itself <laughs> was that there was insufficient ventilation, but that's not why it shut down. It shut down because a capacitor on a buck regulator went bad and shorted out. I don't know, maybe it stayed running for a little bit, and it saw the excessive heat. I don't know. But it works. 